Hello, Charlie TCG here, and welcome back to Looking Ahead, the series where I break down the meta, what's happening over Japan, and how will it impact Taiwan. Today, we're looking at more broader scope. We're looking at how the Surgeon Sparks meta is really shaping up around the world, looking at the online results, as well as also looking at sort of the City League results in Japan. Plus, we've got to break down some of the Taiwanese Great Ball Leagues, kind of see exactly what decks are really performing well. Look at the top A and kind of how all of this sort of format really impact the Surgeon Sparks meta as we get to regionals very soon in this brand new format. I know we just had a finals of Reggie Draco closing up the Stellar Crown format, which some people really enjoyed and really excited to see exactly how this current sort of format really impacts Surgeon Sparks. Plus, we have a brand new Ace Bag to look at. Can I see if it's got any competitive viability? Just want to say thank you so much for supporting the channel. It's truly been absolutely incredible. I'm glad you guys are loving the Surging Sparks format. And without further ado, let's jump right into the brand new card. So the only new card that got revealed this year, well, sorry, this week, was this new Ace Bag, the Treasure Gadget, which is pretty interesting. Search your deck for up to five Pokemon Tool cards, reveal them and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, immediately, this could be quite fun, like Revel Room, or for example, like the Rotom V Stars, so who can have a ton of tall cards and do a huge amount of damage or potentially protect your guys as much as possible. Downside is, we also have that brand new technical machines, which can pretty much do exactly the same thing in the Rotom style decks, but this is now an A spec. But you, the plus side about being an A spec, you can get the likes of Bravery Charms, you can also get the likes of the um, Defiance Band, Defiance Belt, those of these other sort of cards which a technical machine search cannot really get. I do think this is an interesting A spec, not exactly the most competitive, groundbreaking one, but again, this is quite early on. But when you really compare it to the likes of Unfair Stamp, Giant Cape, or sorry, Hero's Cape, as well as also the likes of Prime Catcher, this is definitely more of a mid style card. Now, let's actually break down the meta in the Surging Sparks format, giving my sort of insight kind of how these results really impact our Surging Sparks regional meta game, which comes out very, very soon. So, if we look at the top 16 meta game for this, we can see here it's changed a little bit but not too much at all. We can see here still Raging Ball and Charizard are still up there at the top, but the numbers are dwindling. They're no longer the huge bloated 16, sometimes even nearly 20% of the meta share. It's going down to 13.1 and 12.8, which I still think is really respected. Charizard, as we talked about last week, is really developing into more of a Trapper Ghost build. It's focusing more on how Trapper Ghost really help with the search and doing 240 damage, which is still pretty respectable. Make sure you actually can go through the likes of a Cornerstone Mask Ogre Palm. Plus also you can access your Noctiles much early on to get out your Ultra Balls, your Red Candies, your Forest Hill Stone, to really get your Charizard as quickly as possible. And one of the huge insights is that Gardevoir has now snuck up to the third most played sort of deck, being 8.6%, which I think is a really good sign. Gardevoir, I think, is in a really good spot right now. I think the Turbo Star build, really kind of playing on with the more of like one or two red candies, really power up a Gardevoir as early as turn two. I think it's a much stronger build. Think about how strong like sort of Drifting or Three player is, doing nearly potentially 300 damage, move around some guys with some with Monkey Dories. I just think that is the best way to play Gardevoir. Where's Drago? Obviously, we just saw it win um, LEIC. And obviously he's doing really, really well right now in the meta game. Didn't really gain too many things. I really still think Scramble Switch is the best way. A really interesting card for Roger Drago. So you can constantly go like back-to-back -back Kieran plays or potentially like sort of the, the, um, the Giratina ones and not really suffer any consequences. But I think it's doing pretty well. It's always also Drag Up or being 7.1. Now that kind of rounds out the first 50% of the sort of the meta share, which is really good to see. We're seeing the regular sort of top five decks seen around there. I think Drag Up is still in a really good spot, but really even after their format right now, no, that's good. I know we have Terror Orb, so we can easily get our Dragon Pulse out, uh, but I just don't think that's enough to really keep it in this format. One deck which I think is doing incredible well is Lost Box. It's been nearly 4% right now there, and it's really focusing more on the Pikachu, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but I think that really is the best way to play Pikachu. Kind of getting out turn two, it has an amazing ability, and kind of you can do some good cleaning up to the likes of Sableye, Greninja, Kramaris, and Late Game. I think it's super strong. I do like some of the new sort of decks. It's really still creeping in there. I think Golden Go is doing incredibly well with my favorite card, Togekiss, so I'm really excited to see Togekiss actually some play. Kind of like really stood to find in, in Golden Go, and I'm really going to talk about the list, because we've seen that really have a really good success on line as well as also a Taiwanese event. So I think that's really a good sort of sign. We've seen some of the new cards really adapt and innovate to these already existing archetypes. After is definitely people are focusing on the Daichi build with the um, Starmie one and the obviously the amazing Hyper Blower, removing the all of the um not Hyper Blower, I, I forgot the name of the name of that new ace, but removing all their tall cards around there. So helping you in that raging bolt matchup so you can use that Starmie to do that additional two pings and then guarantee you get that knockout with um, Archer Eidolon's attack and making sure it can kind of like have 300 HP, it was quite a lot. Rory Moon and Ancient Box, again, are doing incredibly well. I think Ancient Box focusing more on having that new Corridon as well, doing that 180 damage after turn two because you'll constantly be utilizing your Ancient attacks. I think it's really, really good. And so we got some some controlled archetypes doing well. Iron Fawn is it. So we can see here, lots of these archetypes do focus around having wall box abilities. So obviously, Iron Fawn is going to go up there because Lugia is still a threat right now. And obviously, Stone Rikes as well. Lots of these decks don't really run any lower switch cards unless you're likes of Lugia. You're, but if you're an ex-Lugia, you already have such a terrible matchup. 
So honestly, looking at this matchup here, going into sort of a new surgery support format, what sort of things should you be looking at from this sort of Japanese sort of results? Number one, we can see that definitely Golden Go is actually going to be a threat. We saw it get put four at LAIC, so that's already a good thing. It's already on lots of people's radars. We saw it do really well, had some deep runs at some regionals over in Europe. So again, Golden Go is already on the, the fray. People are now testing out having that Kotoga kiss in Golden Go, taking additional prize cards. So no longer are you going to be sacrificing any plays to have them. Um, the likes of your Palkia, you can really focus on and capitalize on having those dust nords, having those dust clocks, try and get some additional prize cards that sort of way. And taking an additional prize with like token kids, all of a sudden golden could be a huge threat. What's the thing, Lost Box? I think I know Rage Drew Draco is and is going to be very, very popular right now over here one LAIC. So maybe Lost Box should kind of like slow down a bit. But I think if you want to really want to play Pikachu, that's definitely the best way to play this one. Some other decks which I think aren't really shown here, which have a lot of sort of merit right now, likes of Serilage and Maridon. I think these ones are really good, really good picks. They are definitely in that they're in more of the 18.6%. We've always seen them about the 2% for a mess game. Serilage has kind of like dwindled its numbers over in Japan. But when we look at the online results we'll talk about shortly, they actually have doing pretty well. So these are sort of picks as well. If you sort of analyze this one, you can see definitely the topics are like some Raging Bowl. I still think you have to chuck Raging Jago up there because the results are still absolutely pumpy, doing incredibly well. I think definitely Gardevoir and Charizard are going to be on sort of the, the uphill and I hope the uptake. I think the new A-spec from Charizard playing the... Um, the amazing sort of like the carrier to get all your guys out there. I think having Trapper goes with the Noctowl, we saw it. obviously some people play it at LEIC. We've seen it do really well in Japan and we've seen it quite a lot of videos of people talking about this one. So I do think this is a really good way to play Charizard. So that's all my insight looking into Japan. Now I want to actually see at the results from the Taiwanese Great Wall events. These sort of smaller events which are kind of held around the country and kind of see exactly what decks have been winning them. So obviously looking at this weekend, we can actually see that Lost Box 1 did in fact win a 128 player event with the Lost Box 1 with a few Rage Dragos chucked in there the um, Greninja Palkia deck, as well as a couple of Lugias. Now, in looking at this one, we can see that some of these decks are already doing really well in Japan, and we're going to talk about shortly about the online defense. I definitely do think this Lost Box deck is definitely a little bit of a threat. Having the likes of Trapagos, making sure you can do that 180 damage, going through the likes of Pulso Mars Ogre, sorry, 240 damage, which goes through the likes of Pulso Mars Ogre, but you're not slowed down and shut off by some of these very scary abilities from the likes of Iron Thorns or any sort of um, Mimikyu's. Or we, obviously, you'd go... It doesn't go through Mimikyu, but we have the likes of Kramer, we have the likes of Sable, I actually go through any of the other threats. I think that's really good. Roger Drago, again, I think is really powerful. The lists haven't really been shown right now, but going through this one, we can definitely see the likes of Velocity and Trap Goats is definitely the best way. And over here, we can see another one that won this weekend is seeing the likes of the Raiding Grenin Greninja package with Palkia and the other, the Greninja Terror, which I think is another really good deck. We're also seeing here like Mariano doing well, some couple um the Enraging Bolts, and obviously Art Doradon here in the top four. Again, we're seeing some newer archetypes kind of like sh shine out here. I think Art Doradon is a really good pick right now. I think people are really clocked on to how Daichi plays it with the, um, the amazing A-spec as well as also the Starmie is a really good way to actually cap the th cap deal with the threat of Raging Bolt because that is definitely your scariest sort of matchup and helps you actually go through some very sort of scary um, Pokemon. I think Rydon as well is really powerful. Having instead of having, P now having Pikachu in that and Magneton, all of a sudden you can get an Iron Hands out much, much earlier on and potentially attack with Raichu to actually get these huge one-hit KOs, which I am a huge, huge fan of. Then we see another friend here. We can see here that last week we saw Roy Moon do really well and Shin Pao. Deck and like Shin Pao, we talked about it a little bit, but not actually been popping up too much. I do think Shin Pao is in a decent spot right now in the metagame. He didn't really gain any sort of new cards. I think the scariest thing is obviously having the 60 HP, so um can definitely be easily KO'd from the likes of Dragon Ball and having Kirim in the Red Drago. It's really, really scary. You can see this sort of um this bracket for top eight, it's in a really good sort of format right now. Charizard, we're having Lost Box. Yes, I'm not Lost Box. Um Sonics. Yes, I know Sonics is a big throw sort of threat. Well, those of these decks which can't really get switching out, but I think it's in a really good spot. So kind of like looking at the store of metagame right now, Roy Moon, I think, is a really, really good pick. And same little thing here, we're still seeing likes of Charizard and Godfather. We're already seeing them one of the best decks right now in Japan. And we can actually see that being incremented here. And so of the final sort of result I want to look here, it's all with Golden Go 1. And this is where I really started to see that token kiss sort of action in play. We can see here, we didn't, we see some of the common sort of themes. We've seen the Lost Box Pikachu, we've seen Palkia, we've seen likes of Lugia, we've seen... The likes of Charizard, Lost Box, not Lost Box, and um, I keep saying Lost Box when I meant like Raging Bolt. So we are seeing some of the common denominators really kind of show around him. If we just look again, look at the most of these one. We saw a common one out. We are seeing likes of Lugia, we're seeing likes of Reggie Drago, the um, Lost Box Pikachu. So this is definitely making me really think that these are really good contenders around the world, not only in Japan, but we're actually seeing it be translated around the world. If we just focus a bit more on Golden Go, we can see that this is kind of a list that's definitely been a lot more popular. The one that actually won. Didn't play that brand new chemical, which gets some energies out, but we are seeing it does play a one. Right 
101 line of Tokakis, who plays a 1-1 line of Dustin Wall, because Dustin Wall is a really good pick right now. Because they obviously can chuck a couple of red candies in there, and you only need to have one Dustin Wall and one Tokakis to actually get utilize it. You've seen them to potentially get just from maybe one or two price cards. It's really, really strong. And making sure that you can actually go through these sort of plays and kind of get some people potentially off um, some briar sort of turns, which can be really, really scary if against like a trap goes and potentially sometimes even um Charles will end up playing this one. I think that's a really good pick. One thing I also love about this one, it still plays that energy search pro because I think that's really good, the best one to play right now in Cordia. Guarantee you're playing out one of every energy, but now you don't need to worry about having like the mix of like how many metals you should play, how many waters can I go with Palkia. That's why I really love this one. Energy search pro. Turn one, sorry, turn two, get all your energies out there. You have a huge attack of Golden Gate, and then you just need to rely on just searching out for your superior energy retrievals, which can easily be searched out from the likes of a Cryptomaniac or potentially the likes of your Irida, or just drawing them in, which I think is so powerful for the likes of Pokestop and your Golden Gate ability. So I generally think this is a really good pick right now for Golden Goat, and I think Golden Goat is in an amazing spot moving forward. We've seen it do really well online, we've seen some top players online kind of like play this one, and we're seeing it have really good results right now, especially in tournaments around the world and the rest of Asia. Now let's actually look at our meta game right now, kind of like developing over in the online sort of tournaments. We can see here that the most sort of players right now is like Sarah but it's only getting a full 47% win rate, which again is still pretty good, but we can kind of like look around at the rest of the meta game. This gives you a good insight. Lots of people obviously do play the newer style decks here, like some Lost Zone Box, like some Maridon, the Hydragon, as well as also any of the um, strongest sort of decks here, like Golden Go. We are seeing that mostly people do play some new, fun, exciting to toys to sort of play around with. This is, of course, because their meta game is constantly developing, and we're going to see these results definitely change. I know, obviously, online results never really um, relate and translate over to our sort of events, like in regionals, as well as also any sort of these huge or majors events. But this is a really good insight to see exactly what are people playing. We can see here that it's lots of serenade, but the win rate is pretty okay, and we're seeing it had one of the most results right now. So I think that's a really good start to support. We're seeing that people really like playing serenade. What is the good matchups? Can I really hold up against like a Raging Bolt deck or potentially a Hydrogen if it comes around? Well, obviously you can kind of go around Hydrogen, but we're seeing people really play around Hydrogen right now, playing a ton of different energies, going with the Upper Neo, having a counter game, having a pitch up, potentially even Dust Nor as well, taking additional more price cards. That's something which is really exciting. But we're seeing some other decks which I absolutely love, like the Palky deck, not even kind of break the top 16 results in sort of online events. We're seeing like some sort of Trap Coast Dust Nor, which I think was an incredibly strong pick. And we saw it with one of the most sort of played archetypes in LAIC. It's only number 15 right now in the 30 Sparks format online. Again, it's completely changing the different sort of response right now. We see here some of the best sort of win rates sort of decks are like sort of pitch up control and likes of um um, Lost Zone Box. So again, these are some really good things to think about. Is Pitch Up Control going to be a really good, strong contender? Or can it be really shut off by like some Iron Fawns, which has a 55% win rate online? Or potentially like Lost Zone Box. This is a really good pick right now, because obviously you're playing likes of Pikachu, you're playing the likes of Iron Fawns as well, just slow down your opponent, potentially even some Iron Hands, but more like it's sort of focusing on Trapicos and Pikachu as your big sort of enclosure games, as well as also Blood Moon Ice Luna. These are decks which I absolutely love, and I think Lost Zone Box is doing incredibly well right now. It's the best way to play Pikachu. So I do think looking at these online results, you definitely should give it some merit because it kind of is going to be sort of good incrementation. If you're seeing the top players play Maridon, play Golden Go, play the likes of Trapico, so you're going to be pumping them on the ladder. You're going to really see that they're going to be analyzing the meta around the world. Obviously, Searching Sparks format has been a bit legal for a lot longer in likes of Japan and tai Taiwan. So that's a good sort of increment as well to see exactly how will this sort of in in increment any of my plays at these big sort of major events. So kind of like looking at all these results, we've got to see here that this was the best sort of winning result from the huge biggest event on online this past week. It was the Art Dural the Art Duraldon one, which obviously plays the Megaton Blower and the Star Me as well. The very sort of popularized by Daichi and the Heavenly Kings tournament. So again, this is something to really think about. If this is the biggest sort of event on the online sort of scene, it was played and won by an Art Duraldon player. Could this really be a threat to a 30 Sparks format? Could this be a really good off meta or potentially now has to be actually made a meta style deck? So kind of looking at these sort of results and analyzing them, will we see an increase of off meta sort of decks like the likes of Duradon, like Sarah or can they generally be classed as meta right now? Richard Bolt is definitely one of the best decks right now. It's had multiple sort of top eights, obviously in the Taiwanese Great Great Ball events. We've seen it do really, really well in online events, one of the most popular sort of decks here and having over a 50% win rate. So it's also the most sort of wins obviously in City League in Japan. That's something to really think about. Pikachu best in Lost Box. I think that's generally the case. If you want to attack with this one, Lost Box is definitely the best, but the best utilizer of Pikachu is to have some Maridon. Getting out turn one, having that huge short board state as well, getting a huge attack with potentially even Raichu or even 
the likes of Raito and all Raikou as well. It's really, really strong right now. Pikachu, I think the best in Lost Box is a really good attacking option. It can utilize the ability to be best sort of effect. So it's also attacked with 300 damage. It can easily clean up for likes of Sableye. There's still a ton of room to grow. This is a absolute brand new sort of format. We haven't seen how it really impact it. We've only seen from very small events like the Great Ball Leagues, as well as also some online events, which have had over 100 players, as well as also City League as well, which we cap out at 64 players. So again, there is a ton of room to play. It hasn't really been shown exactly what is the best set. If we look at events in Japan, they, we didn't get the next Champions League till like pretty much near Christmas time, the 21st and 22nd of December. And that time it'll be in the new Evolution sort of style deck. So that's not really going to be focusing on the Surging Sparks. But if we look at some of the events right now, we've got a couple of regionals coming up in the Surging Sparks format. And it's a ton of room to play. Definitely one thing I always like to talk about with this one. How will the online events, some of the other events really impact the regionals for us? This is a huge sort of talking point as well. If we just look at the online results here, we can see the likes of Sterling is the most played archetype, but one of the strongest sets I think right now in the format is like Trapper Goes Dustin and I really love Palkia, and that's not even on the sort of top six scene sort of played online. So this is something to really think about. This is a very sort of a increased and bloated sort of metagame right now. We're not seeing the best sort of ones here. We are seeing, if we look at the top sort of performing decks like Raging Bolt, Lost Box, and Control, doing the best sort of on the online sort of winning percentage wise. So that's something to really consider if you're going to the impact one. I think those top five, could definitely sort of make the graphic of some sort. Definitely likes of Mirage, I think he's going to see some play. Likes of Raging Bolt, Lost Zone Box, Reggie Drago. All of these decks, I think, are really good contenders to make like the graphic as a top six decks. So that's something to always really consider about. Looking at these online results, kind of like seeing what is doing the best one. How can you increment and change some of the lists as well? And they will have a huge impact on the events. So generally looking ahead, will online results really impact the meta of the game that much? Will we actually see likes of Lost Zone Pikachu be, make the graphic be 10% at the next regionals over in the Surgery Sparks format, will it generally just be a flop and only really popular online? What is the best, um, what's the best deck right now to play? And honestly, I generally think um, Knights of Reggie Drago, I still think is really good. Taking off especially after LEIC getting a back-to-back -back win and having four of them, not back-to-back -back win, two of them in the finals and having four, like three out of the four top eight, it's definitely something to be really considerate because obviously Reggie Drago is doing incredibly well right now. And will Pikachu see more success? I really like this Pikachu. I think obviously Pokemon is really trying to lean in to make that one of the best decks right now. Obviously, it is one of the mascots for Pokemon and it's doing incredibly well right now on the online sort of scene. So I'm also on sort of the meta game around the rest of the world. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, really analyzing to see how we saw top eight results around the sort of um, the globe really impact sort of as we get into this new sort of format in Surging Sparks. So if you have, please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. What do you, how do you think this meta game is really being affected by online results? Do we think the likes of Reggie Drago is still got continuous success after winning LEIC? Or can we see some newer decks like the likes of Arctoraladon, the Lost Box Pikachu, or Sarah Lodge actually make a huge splash in the meta game? So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a few days for another video. Bye for now.